you're you're doing good. Just, just stay on. Don't stay on amendments. Okay. Don't talk. <laughs> for, for these amendments and stuff like that, this is the first I hear of it. Too much at one time. I don't have time to read that. Other people don't have time. They got a lot of people work. Now, some people might, but I like to see a percentage of the people that that heard about all this, heard about every one of these amendments coming up. But I didn't. And I tried to keep in touch with this thing, but I did not hear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roderick. You did good. Michael, Michael Lunsford. Michael Delcom. Jeremiah Seppel. You, you can cross the red tape. <laughs> Hi. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Jeremiah Supple, and uh, uh, I guess what I have to say can relate to either this or the ordinance also. But um, I, I'd like to address this to Ms. Cook. Uh, Mr. Castile and uh, Mr. Conk. Um, uh, Ms. Cook, at your town hall meeting, I asked the question, would you be able to give, give me your word yeah, that sir. you yeah. would be able to... Yeah, stick, you know, you get your five minutes. It's not like a question and answer deal. So you got five minutes to talk on the amendment, and then if she wants to chime in and, and answer your question, you can. I, I'm not asking her a question. I'm making a statement. Okay, sound like a question. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, can you take that off my time? Um, so, could, so that I could take uh, five off. But I, I asked the question at your, uh, if you would mind giving me your word that we would have at least two weeks for a final document, so that we would have time to study that document, understand it, and have a conversation with you about that. And that's not what happened. But you gave me your word, Mr. Conk and Mr. Castillo, you backed her up and, and agreed to the two-week period. And we, the, tonight is not the two-week period. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Paul. Next speaker, please. Kim Goodell. Sure. Karen DeCluit. Jeff Daly, and the final speaker, Ravis Martinez. Ordinance. Ordinance. Okay. Okay. He 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 said you did. Uh, Lloyd Roshan. Okay. I apologize. It it wasn't on the list, but he did recall that you submitted a blue sheet. Either one, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, Mr. Duyo, ladies and gentlemen of the council, I've never seen anything like this. Such an important document as this is going to be used to manage the affairs of this city and parish for the next generations. And... Um, the additional document that was presented to the people, the title of which was published in the Daily Advertiser, it's like this. The 16 amendments that were proposed this evening completely diminishes what was published in the newspaper. So in essence, I don't care what legal says, common sense says that you should delay the adoption of this and lay it over until an appropriate time so when we the citizens can have an opportunity to speak to the effect that this document is going to have on not only us today but future generations to do otherwise would be a great disservice to our community uh, and especially 
not only those people in the city of Lafayette, but those people who are in the unincorporated area who are being completely disenfranchised by this document. Uh, am I allowed to go ahead and speak to the ordinance itself now? Uh, that would be at the end. That'd be we'll at the end. Called the, again. This, okay. would, this would be just for the, uh, the amendment, Mr. Uh, amendment. This is completely inappropriate, and I will guarantee you that should this go forward to the Justice Department, they will rule this down. I've never seen something such as this in all of my, I, I worked in this building for 23 years. I was clerk of the city parish council. I have never seen anything of this, of this nature to be tried to pull on the public. Let's get it right, folks. If we're gonna do it, let's do it right. Thank you. Next speaker, please. He the, was the final, final one. Okay. All right. So at this time, we'll go ahead and call the vote on the amendment that's on the floor that was offered by Councilman Castile and second by Councilman Conk. Yes. Correct. Which consists of the 16 amendments. Right. District 2? Yes. District 3? No. District 4? Yes. District 5? No. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? No. District 1? Yes. Motion to amend approved. Okay. Now we'll have any council discussion on the ordinance as amended. Seeing none at this time, we'll go to a com public comment. Oh. Uh, we will go now to. Oh, hold on uh, one second. Yeah, to Council Member Nanette. Council. Cook. It's my turn now? It's your turn. I can speak now? You can speak, dear. Okay. I would like to offer with Councilman A. Bear here, we are offering an amendment to Section 6, which refers to the term limits. Um, we would like to offer the amendment, which would state that all current members, and of course, legal can probably clean this up, all current mm -hmm. members term limits would also apply toward the new council. So not only termed out members, but all current council members terms existing right now would move forward with them in either of the two councils moving forward. Okay, uh, Mr. Escott. Yes, sir. Well, before I ask the motion a second, did you get a chance to hear Ms. Nanette Cooks? I, I did, and we have uh, pre-prepared, Ms. Abair will handle Ms. Cook's amendment. Okay, I, did, do you wanna go ahead and read? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I think you have this in your packets already, but this would be some uh, amendments to Section 201E, which would change um, the, uh, I'm going to just read the entire thing as amended instead of trying to tell you what's, what's out and what's in. Uh, this, is, this is the amended E. A city council or parish council member who has served more than two and one half terms in three consecutive terms shall not be eligible to qualify as a candidate for council member for the succeeding term, this was some already added language here, on the same council on which he or she has served. The term limitations of this subsection apply only to service for consecutive terms on the same council. This is, this is part of the, the amendment that Ms. Cook is offering. Except that consecutive terms served on the city parish council prior to January 6th 2020 shall be counted toward the term limitations of this subsection for both the city council and the parish council. A council member who becomes term limited on one council is not disqualified from serving on the other council unless the term limitation results in whole or in part from service on the city parish council as provided herein. And the proposed amendment would go on to delete the language that was inserted uh, on July 10th which dealt with only council members who are term limited at the end of your present term. So that language would be removed. Okay, that's good. Uh, that's exactly what he said, yes. Okay, so um, to, to, and, to clarify it for the, for the people watching and people yes, here, an example would be Councilman Nakan, Councilman A, Councilwoman Hebert Cook, and Councilman Pat Lewis, and Councilman Conk, correct would for example I'm in my second term under this formation of government should it go to the voters and they decide to 
through the charter. And you I, run, and you I get run. one more term. I'm only eligible for the one which will concede the, yes. the three consecutive. Yes. Under the current version that was introduced on July 10th, the term limitation only applies to those who are term limited on this council. Now, at, at the end of this current term, they would not be permitted to run for either council. And now we're making sure, moving forward, those council members that are termed out right now are termed out. New government passes. We just complete the whatever's remaining from the other. Under the, under the amendment, those who are termed out would still be termed out. Correct. But what it adds to the term limitation is you roll into the new councils should, should this pass and the, and the uh, incumbents decide to run, it rolls over your current terms on this council into the term limitations of the new councils. And in my case, it would be one. Correct. Okay. Right. We were just looking for some consistency and, and fairness across the board. So no, that's I'm, I'm in support of that. Where we came up with this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, we got some councilmen before we do the motion in a second. Uh, Councilman Boudreaux. Mike, we just amended um, a section of term limit um, on Councilman Castile's amendment, and that has passed six to three. Yes, sir. So that is now part of the ordinance. What Ms. Cook is proposing, are you considering that an additional amendment to yes. add, or are you considering that in place of what we've just done? In place of what you've just done. It would be, it would be to replace what was just uh, adopted as part of the comprehensive package of amendments. Okay. So, so what we just voted six to three on in favor of would be undone with a favorable vote from Councilman Cook. Correct. It would be replaced. This one section 201 E would be replaced with this amendment and everything else that was just adopted would, okay. uh, that rest so, of the amendment would stay the same. So I'm, I'm not going to support that and I'm going to tell you why. And, um, you know, there were individuals who I think was trying to get rid of Boudreaux and Castile, and they were successful with that because I offered myself up. But when we start making policy that's defunct, there's not a lawyer in America who is going to agree that preventing someone to run for an unoccupied office is constitutional. And I think that's what happened in 1992 is that what was originally proposed as good law got changed and, 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 and tried to appease people so much and make people comfortable. This is why we're in the condition we're in now. What I will say to the ladies who's offering this amendment, what will happen is like what happened in 2008 when we came on board as eight of nine new members. In 2024, when the four of you all term off, along with the mayor president due to term limits, uh, yet again, the government starts from scratch. And just like any private people like to say, run it like a business, just like any private function, any private professional services, when you don't have experience in office, you have problems. Okay, now the, the four members who are terming off this year, I think that was appropriate. Myself, Castile, Bellard, and Terrio, for those people who felt this action was being done for our sake. That wasn't the case. I think addressing that is fine, and that's what we did in our amendment. But to continue to pass that on greater than what term limits already call for, term limits never would go away. It's just that it would allow the, the, the new members, Councilman Lewis, Conk, in the two of you all to stay on and offer that experience that's going to be needed during transition. So I'm not going to support this. Um, we, we offered ourselves up for the sake of making people comfortable that this was not about circumventing term limits. But if we yet again put this government in that position, we're putting it at risk. And, and many people feel that what you see going on in Congress and in Baton Rouge is because of the impact of term limits and constantly having new people who don't have a clue of the functions of government over and over coming in on short notice and not able to get adapted and antiquated to these processes. Therefore, things don't get done like four special sessions at the state level. So congratulations, but I'm not going to be able to support this from a principal's perspective. Okay. Councilman Terrio. Mr. Aber, a couple of things. Um, Mr. Boudreaux touched on one. I spoke to somebody in reference to, in dealing with the, the state constitution. First question to you is, does state constitution trump local government? 
There's a state constitution trump local government. Yeah. The, I mean, and I'm not sure what the question is. I guess in mean, reference to term limits. The, the state constitution um, is the governing document which governs the state statutes and local ordinances as well. Okay. From what I'm being told. And home rule charters. Is that even, and I've already made it clear I'm not running again. The four term limited individuals, even with the amendment that's proposed and has been and with the addition of what was being proposed here, that if somebody were to fight that constitutionally, that there's no way it would hold up. I know you guys and Mr. Escott maybe do not have an opinion on that at this point, but if somebody filed suit on that. I have an opinion on that. You do? Far away. Uh, I, I don't believe it's correct that term limits are, are unconstitutional. That's actually an issue that we researched quite specifically um, in uh, conjunction with all of the term limit discussions, both the original proposal and this proposal. Um, there is an issue with shortening the term of an elected official. I think there are specific legal issues associated with that. Um, this does not do that. It provides for um, term limits just like, I mean, just a different kind of term limit as is in the current charter. And um, there's not any, any issue with, I mean, if someone is term limited um, under the current charter and they're term limited under the new charter, I don't think that raises any legal issue. Or if someone's, if in any manner that term limits are counted, if service on the prior council is then counted towards service on any of these new councils, should this pass, uh, I don't think that raises any legal issue. And that's something that we did research specifically. Even if, like we're on one council, if this splits up into two, one city council, one parish council. If somebody was term limited from a city council, uh, could they fight that they would be able to, or sue that they would be able to serve on the parish council? Well, sure, they could fight or sue. I mean, with I, I don't know that they would win, but they, I mean, that's certainly. But there is a chance, though, that that, that particular uh, side would come forth. They would have to go to trial, of course. I mean, in, you know, anything is possible, but I mean, again, our research indicated that. Uh, both of these term limit um, provisions, uh, regardless of which passes, would not raise a constitutional issue. Well, you do that, Mr. Abram. Thank you. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Okay. Just to make clear, on the floor, we need to get a motion and a second for Councilwoman Annette Cook's amendment. And I have a motion by Councilman Cook and a second by Councilwoman Ms. Abair. We just had some council discussion. Ms. Nanette, do you want to continue to speak or you want to go to the uh, public comment on regards to the amendment that you go ahead? Um, yes, I just would like to speak to uh, Kenneth Bujo's uh, response. And I, of course, I respect him very much. And he has been a big help as far as when we came on new. But, but I do believe that we have a very firm and strong council clerk. We have a, a great staff here. and. There were four of us that came on who were who were new and I don't think that that would be something you know eventually you're going to have a council where new people will be coming on and so I'd, I'd like to think just in the in the idea of consistency across the board and what we're trying to do here with term limits and and current existing council people I believe that 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 was the intent of this particular amendment just to be consistent and um, I do feel like you know again we have you know we, we can learn when we come on board we're all new but we learn we, we make it we make that effort to you know do our homework and understand what's going on so I don't really think that that's necessarily maybe a, a valid argument for not supporting this amendment thank you okay um, at, at this time is there any public comment in regards to the new amendment that was just offered okay and uh, I'll call the names on the term limit amendment and you may say if you would like to speak to the amendment. I'll wait later till the ordinance. Roddy Bajeron. Andrew Abair. Lloyd Rochon. The term limits. Jimmy Duon. Just the ordinance. Matt Thibodeau. Wallace Senegal. Pass. Jessica Allen. Andre Bro. William Labor. Stuart Bro. Kevin Blanchard. Eric C Crozier. Marty Cluett. Will Kellner. 
Carly Amlabor, Janine, Miles Matt, Anita Begno, Ashley Mudd, Roderick Robinson, Michael Lunsford, Michael Delcom, Jeremiah Supple, Kim Goodell, Thank you. Karen DeCloy. Ordinance. Jeff Daly. Ordinance. Ravis Martinez. Ordinance. Okay. And, and just remember the names because if we have other amendments, I'm going to just ask if anybody from this list would like to speak to the amendments instead of calling all the names <laughs> over again. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Got gotcha. <laughs> Okay. So they all passed, so at this time we had council discussion. We need to go ahead and call the vote on the amendment that is on the floor. District 3? Yes. District 4? No. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Motion to amend approved. Mr. Escott. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, as a result of the uh, amendment offered by Councilwoman Cook, Cook. and Councilwoman Abair passing, uh, it is now uh, necessary that there be an amendment offered to amend the ordinance so that the ordinance is consistent with the amendment that just occurred to the attached proposed charter amendments. And we have the amendment that would need to be made so that the ordinance is consistent with it. That's great. <laughs> so we're gonna amend an or <laughs> we need an amendment to amend the ordinance to make the ordinance amended. This is the updated ordinance. Who wants to offer that? Got a motion by Councilman Castile and a second by Councilman Conk to offer that explanation. Why don't you explain to him? Can you please for the public and for for all of us here, understand what we need to combine what was offered and then what were the other offered yes. and make it one. Sure. Okay. The current title of the ordinance says. Yeah, make sure we get the title right. Mr. Abear is back there. We got to make sure we get the title right. <laughs> so make sure. The, Abair, current, Abair. the current title of the ordinance says that it, it, uh, the purposes of the amendments are, among other things, to quote, provide that members of the existing city parish council who will be term limited at the conclusion of the current term shall not be eligible to qualify as a candidate for either the new city council or the new parish council for the first term of either council. The amendment would remove that language and replace it with the following. To apply term limits of current city parish council members to new city council and parish council. In the body of the ordinance, Section 2, there's a list of summary purposes of the amendment. Um, number 10 would be amended to say, quote, to provide that consecutive terms served by members of the existing city parish council prior to January 6th, 2020 shall be counted toward the term limitations of the new city council and the new parish council for the first term of either council. Those are the amendments. Okay. That wraps it all into one. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. We do have a motion on the floor by Councilman Castile and a second by Councilman Conk. Mr. Terry, you have discussion in regards to this? Okay. All right. Not seeing any council discussion and we went through public comment. Go ahead and call the vote. District okay. 3. Uh, what? This is a new amendment, so you have to allow the public to speak okay. on the ordinance that they just amended. Okay. So out of the names I called, they just amended the title and the ordinance, including the term limit uh, verbiage. Anyone wants to speak to that? Andrew Abair. Good evening. Okay. Let me again just quote the charter. 
All proposed ordinance shall be introduced in writing, shall be confined to one subject expressed clearly in the title. Section 32-12, Ordinances in General, Part A. Part B, all proposed ordinance shall be read by title, except that ordinances proposing amendments to the charter shall be published in full. When you introduced this ordinance, was that clause you just put in in the introductory ordinance or not? It was not. Therefore, I believe you're not following the charter. It's very clear. That's in section B, section 2-12, ordinances in general. It says, except that ordinance of proposing amendments to the charter shall be published in full at introduction. You have not done that. What's interesting is you also have the part about LUS that you did not amend, that you're now amending this other amendment. Interesting. We'll see what happens when this goes. Any other speakers? Any other speakers? Uh, Mr. Roderick Robinson. <laughs> okay, y'all keep amending this, amending that, and everything else. <laughs> Lawyers say they know what's going on <laughs> and stuff like that. People say we don't understand this thing. Y'all doing something not right. I'm not educated. Y'all need to bring it down to my level and stuff like that. Maybe the lawyers are, but I think they mess up sometimes too. So why y'all passing this stuff like this don't make no sense. It's not, evidently whatever y'all doing right here is not even put in the newspaper right now for the other people to hear. Y'all voting on something where people don't even have, other people can't come over here and talk about it, but y'all gonna vote on it. And then how y'all gonna change it later? Y'all not gonna change it. So y'all not taking in consideration of the people that y'all supposed to work for, each and every one of y'all. Y'all passing something that shouldn't even be touched right now to y'all sit down and talk to a bunch of people. Instead of just having meetings out there at certain times and you don't have a full house out there because y'all don't advertise it enough and talk to the people. A lot of people listen on this TV station and stuff like that. Probably saying how much of a fool I am. But I'm scared of this government because the way y'all acting. Y'all trying to benefit y'all, not the people. That's what I'm thinking. See, somebody got something snuck underneath the cover somewhere, and that's what's happening. Why not wait whenever you get more majority of the people to, out here to vote? Y'all, all y'all doing is splitting up the rural area and the city further and further, causing more trouble than anything else in this thing here. When we all people, we live together, we work together. Putting one person ahead of the other, that's unfair, totally unfair. You know, term limits, that's good. And so everybody's not going to be off of, the, off of here all at one time. They got term limits because some people get their way all the time. Knows each branch on how it works and everything else. It, regular individuals like me, I don't know it. I like to try to learn some of it. But y'all don't give it, whenever y'all vote, there's no time to think about it. People y'all talk to, at the meetings, they said, leave it alone. But y'all still pushing for it. Wait till they got a majority of the vote. Wait till 2020 and let the people decide on this thing here where you got a good outcome. Not this 3 and 4% voter turn up. It's unreal to have a vote. They shouldn't have no votes in, in, in December at all. None at all. November's your uh, election time. Vote on that. Wait till the president election. Wait till the governor election. Don't pass something like this here with nobody showing up to vote. It's unreal. Thank you. Any other speakers? Mr. Escott. Yes, sir. I got a question. Besides this meeting here tonight, on any ordinance or any resolution at any given time, can a council member offer an amendment? On the floor? Yes, sir. Does that need to be out in the newspaper and has to be... No, sir. 
No, the, the provision that uh, Mr. Abair is referring to as Section 2-12 ordinances in general, that specific provision talks about when you introduce an ordinance, it has to be introduced in writing at a meeting, um, and that the, it shall be confined to one subject expressed clearly in the title. Um, that does not mean that Mr. Abair is reading that to say that within the subject, you also have to identify each and every minute detail within that subject. The ordinance that was introduced was introduced and confined to one subject and was clearly expressed in the title. That subject is proposed charter amendments. That's the subject. It does not require under the charter that we identify in the title the hundred and some thought, you know, I'm just, however many minor or major changes, although we do try our best in the title to <coughs> summarize the most relevant and critical changes. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. All right. Not seeing any other uh, council members, so we'll go ahead now and take the vote on the ordinance as amended. Yeah. The vote on which one? Y'all's? Yeah. Yeah. So. Combined. Hang on a second. This vote is combined with the, the <laughs> amendment by Councilwoman Cook and the vote that was voted on Councilman Castillo's, correct? You're, we're voting on the amendment to amend all of them together, right? So they can coincide? The amendment that is currently, on. On, that is currently on the floor that is to be uh, voted on is the amendment that was offered and seconded related to the necessary revisions to the ordinance that are consistent with what has already been adopted and amended, the cook a bear amendment to the proposed charter. Okay. Okay. So you're voting on the amendment to the ordinance that is consistent with what has already been adopted. Okay. Call the vote, please. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District five? No. District six? Yes. District seven? Yes. District eight? Yes. District nine? No. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. Motion to amend approved. Okay. Now, what's next? Mr. Terrio has some amendments. Okay. Councilman Terrio, you have the floor, sir. You have, well, let me read this. Councilman William Terrio, who has proposed amendments to the Home Rule Charter document, Councilman Terrio will explain his amendments. You need to, um, you want to explain them, then ask for a motion? Yep, we're going to take them one by one. I'm going to take them one by one and, um, There are some additional ones, but before I start that, I want to apologize to Mr. Robinson because I'm about to muck up the water a little bit here. The first amendment I want to make to this charter is I want to amend the whole charter from five council members to seven council members. Please include Mr. Escott. Oh, his mic's on, believe me. <laughs> He's on all night, sir. So, Mr. Escott, can we amend this current charter from five council members, and I'm talking about only in the city of Lafayette, from five to seven council members? <laughs> we'll take a quick recess break and be right back. <laughs> The answer is twofold. Can we? Yes. Are you prepared to do that? No. To do that would require that you have already gone to a demographer and created district maps for the city of Lafayette to create seven districts that would meet all the DOJ rules, would be incorporated in a descriptive list of each district identifying all seven districts that would then be inserted into the charter 
uh, and then the one and various edits that would need to be made throughout the body of the charter reflecting the change from five to seven um, so the answer is yes it could be made uh, the, the answer is as far as timing no it cannot be made tonight that's exactly what I wanted to hear um, for the record and secondly is that this council number one did not by resolution or ordinance hire a demographer we have no demographer that would draw those lines who would we contact no one all right on to the next one mr. Escott yes sir I would like to amend the charter in whatever sections necessary to create a mayor for the city of Lafayette and a parish president for the parish Do I need to make a motion on that and get a it, second? The, the an, are you asking me, can that be done? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the answer to that question is uh, very similar, but slightly different than the first. Uh, can that be done physically? Yes. Uh, can it be done tonight? Uh, realistically, no. Um, and you and I had a conversation about that uh, Tuesday of this week. Yes, sir. Uh, where you asked for that uh, and by Wednesday morning having pre uh, gone through it preliminarily with only two days left uh, to meet deadlines uh, I informed you that that could not physically get done in, in the 48 hours that it, it was requested um, I did suggest however that if you wish to pursue that it still can be done and it can be done and placed on a separate proposition for the March 2019 election which would then uh, if passed uh, go hand-in-hand hand with the uh, any additional charter amendments that were passed in the December election because neither of them become effective until January 2020 right. but in, in in direct answer to your question for tonight uh, is physically not possible okay. for the record that's what I wanted to clarify thank you so much do you want to still offer that? We can't. It can't be done. Okay, I'll just check. Okay, one thing I do want to... Uh, i tell you what. Let's go through the ones that the council already has in front of them. first one I want to talk about I think is uh, is it section 413 mr. Escott and I'll let you uh, talk about that that's one you and I discussed about changing the governing authority of the police department and the fire department right actually 413 and 414 uh, you are actually you, you don't even need to do that right. anymore that that's been incorporated into the uh, previous version that was offered and, and approved so those have those have been accomplished okay the second one I'm gonna make a an amendment to section 6-02 yes sir in dealing with recalls I think you and I also spoke about this that's correct um, would you like to inform the public uh, in your opinion um, uh, with correct verbiage of what that amendment would be sure it's very simple uh, under section 6-02 recall of the charter proposed of, of the charter your your offered amendment would be that in paragraph a second to last line where it references that the recall process shall be 25 percent of the registered voters your amendment is to reduce that percentage down to 20 percent yes sir and that would be the uh, offered amendment that's an amendment I have we got a amendment on the floor motion by councilman Terrio second second by councilman Billard mm -hmm. as as part of the amendment 
I'm sorry, did you already get a, a motion in a second? Second. Sir. Okay. All right. Never mind. Can I proceed? Yes. Okay. Councilman Boudreau? Oh, something else. Okay. All right, we have a not this one. Okay, we have a motion, uh, a new amendment on the floor by Councilman Terrio, Councilman Billard, Council Discussion. Mr. Terrio, I have a question. What what's the purpose of which going from you said twenty five to twenty? I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I'll put your mic back on. I, I went to Boudreau. Yes, it's going from 25% to 20% because um, under the uh, charter, it only takes 15% to amend the charter. Uh -huh. It only takes 20% to appeal, re repeal the charter. Okay. So, so we if we're going to use that, those figures, why can't we use the same figure when it comes to recalling an elected official? Okay. Makes sense. I just was getting clarification. All right. Any other council discussion in that matter? Any public comment? Or anyone out there with all of those names would like to speak in regards to the amendment Mr. Terrio just brought up? Speak to the amendment only. Hi, my name's Andy Abair. It says any elected official of the city parish government may be removed from office. I think you need to amend that and say city council, parish council, and city parish government because you got three of them, not just city parish government. So I think you need to amend that. Yeah, Mr. Escott, I think we kind of had this discussion on that. Would you like to elaborate on, on that? Yeah. Uh, does it need to be applied to all three, or does this cover all three based on the verbiage that we, we have in the charter? Because we certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want it to apply just to one council and not another. I mean, we, if, if you want to avoid any, I mean, it, it could be up for debate perhaps, but if you want to avoid any, any doubt, you can simply add that if you wish. Could you clarify that in terms? And we sure. can thank Mr. Abair for that. Sure. You could say that uh, the other amendment that you would then offer is any elected official of either the city of Lafayette, comma, the parish of Lafayette and or the city parish government may be removed from office. So can I, what would I need to do is um, pull back my other amendment and substitute it with this one? You can. You or can, can you put them both under one? Yeah. I'm, you want to make it all? I want to make it clean. So should he pull that one back and then? Pull the first one back. Yeah, I'll pull the first one back and withdraw. Okay. We withdraw on the first amendment by Mr. Terrio and the second by Councilman Bellard. And now we will move forward with this amendment to change. Make a motion as per Mr. Ascot based on the recall and addressing the city, the parish, and the city parish government. And we got a motion by Council Material and a second by Council Bellard. Okay. Any public comment on oh. that? Ms. Williams, do we need to go to public comment on what we just did? Yes. Um, we can go, yeah, we go back to public comment because the amendment was changed. It was We're modified. So um, to include the city of Lafayette, parish of Lafayette in the amendment that may be removed. Um, anyone would like to speak to that? Okay. All right. Now we will go ahead and call the vote. District 4. Yes. District 5. Yes. District 6. Yes. District 7. Yes. District 8. Yes. District 9. Yes. District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. Yes. Motion to amend approved. Okay. Now Mr. Terrier would like to offer a oh. Mr. Escott, go ahead. All right. Similar to what was required of the Cook Abair um, amendment. Uh, we need to offer, uh, we need to have Mr. Terrio offer an amendment uh, to the ordinance that is consistent now with his approved amendment on the uh, recall percentage reduction and the clarification on City of Lafayette and Parish of Lafayette. Okay, do I have a motion and a second? And Mr. Aber has the details. Uh, go ahead and read the details. In the title of the ordinance, there is a, uh, one of the list of purposes for the Charter Amendments uh, reads 
to change the method of counting the required percentages of voters for an initiative or referendum petition. After the word petition, add the words and to commence the recall process. Then in, the, in section two of the ordinance, in the summary, the, the, the list of 10 items that are, are uh, summarize the purposes of the ordinance in number seven currently reads to change the method of counting the required percentages of voters for an initiative or referendum petition add following the word petition or for a recall proposition those are the appropriate changes thank you very much you need a motion in a second motion by councilman terrio second by councilman bellard any public comment in regards to another amendment? Okay. Any of those that spoke want to speak? All right. Not seeing any council discussion at this time. Let's go ahead and call the vote, please. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. Motion to amend approved. Okay. Hit, hit the button, Mr. Terry. Terry has changed. Okay. You have the floor. Okay. Mr. Escott, you ready to move on to the next one? Yes, sir. All right. Section 3 09. Currently, professional services uh, under number 6. Professional services currently has three council members and then two from uh, the administration. Uh, the new charter will be changing that and that uh, from what I, I am seeing here is that we will have three from the administration and two from the council. So I want to amend this and I want to have two members on professional services from the city council, two from the parish council and one from the administration. I think you and I also had this discussion. Yes, sir. Would you like to, uh, in case my verbiage was not correct, clarify, uh, uh, correct, clarify me on that? Sure. Under, and, and it was pretty precise, so pretty much got it, but under section 309 of the charter, specifically paragraph A6, The last sentence of A6 under 309. It current the, the proposed charter amendments were for one to be appointed uh, members of the professional services review committee it would consist of five members, one to be appointed by the mayor president, one to be appointed by the city council, one to be appointed by the parish council, one to be the director of public works department and one to be the director of the utilities department. Your proposed amendment would remove the director of public works. Either or. And the director of utilities department and would result in the amendment resulting in one appointment by the mayor president, two to be appointed by the city council, and two to be appointed by the parish council. Correct. So I'd like to make that motion. Got a motion? Is there a second? Second by Councilman Bellard. Now, um, just to clarify to the public who's listening, professional services basically are individuals, uh, council members, currently three council members, and uh, I think Public Works and someone from the administration that review contracts that go before the public or even before the, 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 the council. And uh, that can range in dollars anywhere from a small amount to a very large amount. So that is what professional services entails. It deals with contracts. So that's all I have for now. Is there okay. a council discussion? Councilman Castillo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Terrio, so what you're in, in, in a sense doing is taking the power away from the mayor president, dealing with contracts and professional services by giving it to four elected officials. That's what you're saying? Taking the powers away from the parish president, the mayor president. You might talk to me. Currently, 
Currently, Mr. Castile, we have three council members who have a majority and the administration has two. So it's not taken away. It's continuing the way basically it has always been. I disagree it's, with you. Instead of having uh, two, he, he will have one. So you can have uh, two um, city, uh, two for the city, two for the parish, or heck, you can even, uh, uh, if this moves forward, you could actually have each council, a city council and a parish council actually approving them uh, um, on their own like they did a long time ago before consolidation but I do not think the administration should have three votes on professional services contracts okay I, I don't see three votes but uh, let me ask you another question uh, you're taking the, the, the public works director out of it and the utilities director out of it correct not necessarily yeah that's what you got right here no that's what I'm reading well no, what I'm saying is that you're going to have two council members from the city, two from the parish. You'll either have the public works director there or the administration there or the uh, director of utilities there. So you're taking the public works director out of it or the utilities director out of it? One of them, Could depending say, on what the contract could be. The administration has the right to appoint uh, or, or send somebody yeah, exactly. at, at each time. Yes. Exactly. So you're taking the public works director out of it and the utilities director out of it. You're leaving the mayor president with two city council members and two parish council members. That's what you're doing. Okay. Well, Ms. Castillo, it. let's agree on this. Currently... I'm not going to agree on it. Well, no, no, no. But let, let, let's agree what we're doing currently. Currently, we have three council members that have three votes on professional services, and then you have public works and whoever else, or the LUS director, two. So the power belongs to the council when it comes to contracts. So what this new charter is, in, is proposing is that the power flips from the council, from going from three votes on the council to now having three votes to the administration. That is the whole purpose of why I'm doing this. Let me if you're okay question. with giving the administration that power, I, that's I, up to you. I've got a question for you. Why don't you leave in the public works director and the utility director and leave the two council members from each one and the appointment by the mayor president? Well, why don't we just not change it at all and leave it the way it is? You would like that, wouldn't you? I certainly would. But I wouldn't. That's why I'm here tonight. It's the same thing. So I'm, I'm asking you, why would you leave the public works director out and the utilities director out of professional services? All you're doing is you're appointing one appointment by the mayor president. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then the two council members from each. So you're taking the two directors out of the professional services committee who deal with major contracts on a daily basis, and you're doing away with them. I don't agree with it. Uh, I'm going to vote against it. That's, that's up to you. That's what you want. That's fine. You feel your way, I feel mine. That's not a problem. Well, uh, I just the, disagree with what the you're only doing other here. option, and we'll have some discussion from the public as to what they would like to see on this, is that right now the power is with the council. Let's it make can no still mistake be with the council. It. Three votes, and the administration has two on professional services. That approves contracts, folks. What's proposed in the new charter gives the administration three votes, and you would have one person on the city council and one person on the parish council. So it would revert from the power being belonging to the council who represent the people of Lafayette to the administration, which would have three votes and the council would have two. It's that was the whole reason. It's a body of recommendation. This. They make a recommendation. That's why the public works director and the utilities director is involved in this process because of what they do. The mayor president makes, makes a decision on contracts, not the council. I understand you're trying to give the power, the power to the council because we have it today. If you feel that way, why don't you put the public works director back in it, utilities back in it. You got four council members and three administrators who still have the power, if that's what you're concerned about. I'll tell you what, Mr. Castile, this is what I'll do. I, I hear what you're saying, and I'm going to make it real easy. Mr. Ascot. Yes, sir. If we left it like it was right now, we would have three council members on professional services, correct? 
and then we would have the public you, works director and the OUS director. Those two. Under the current charter. Under the current charter. If you left it like it is, what you would have is a body of five, right. two appointed by the mayor president, and three appointed by the council. council. Which is what I've been saying. So if we can leave it the way it is, I'm happy with it. But the new charter to rewritten that was given to the council does not show that. It shows the flip. So I'm trying to reverse it based on us having a city council, a parish council, and an administration that oversees both. But can we leave it like it is with just three? No. I mean, it's, it's split council. You can't leave it like that. Yeah. So that's why I went to the two and two on the recommendation. I think our discussion was that you'd have to do it that way because it wouldn't be fair to one council or the other. One council would have three or two, and the other council would have one. So no, it has to stay the way it is. Two count, two um, for the city, and two for the parish, and the administration would have one appointment. That would be the only way to make sure that the power stays in the hands of the council. Oh, well, not necessarily. I just explained to you how to give it back to the councils, but you still take in the public works director out of it and utilities director out of it. The mayor president just has one appointee. These two departments are your two major departments within this government. You're excluding them. Well, I think you want to give the whatever power back contract. to the council, then you add, you add back. Well, it's been uh, a little bit since I've been on professional services, but I was on professional services, and I remember at the time that when contracts pertained to public works, they were there. When contracts pertained to LUS, that director was there. And they did not always show up at the same time. If there was nothing on a contract to be reviewed, um, and did not have to show up. Long time ago, Kenneth. I don't believe that because <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> Must have been before we were born or something. I don't know. But, but uh, speak for yourself. I'm just. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You heard I'm that, sorry. huh? She's. I, f I forgot. We have a youngster. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Escott, there's no other way to do it. To be fair, it would have to be two and two. <laughs> I'm done. Can you foresee any other way of doing this? Can we make it a seven member? Because it's not a paid position, so it doesn't matter. As long as it's an odd number for voting purposes. He just tried that. That's what Jay was saying. Mm -hmm. That's what Jay was saying. Well, Seven. Mr. Terry, you have the floor. Okay. So you, you would like to add Let's back? do this. Let's do this. I'll withdraw my amendment. Second. Mr. Bell. And we'll check. Let's do this. A withdrawal by Mr. Terrio and oh, it won't be second the last. by it won't be the last. Mr. Bellard. That's the process, folks. You see how complicated this is? So it has to be discussed. Now starting again. So what we'll do is we'll propose seven members. We'll have two from the city, two from the parish, one LUS, one public works, and one from the administration. And one uh, uh, the parish president. There we go. Or the mayor president. So let's go by the seven. Move it from five to seven. Okay. That's a motion. I make a motion that we do it that way. Mr. Bellar, would you like to second? No, not right now. Not right now, okay. We just, Ms. Bear would go ahead and second that. So we have an amendment by Council Materio and a second by Councilwoman Ms. Liz Bear on what was just explained. Mr. Escott, do you need to explain this process? You understand? No, I, I think I think y'all are, are, are good. Yep. Okay. Unless anyone on the council is isn't clear on the amendment, but I think Mr. Terrio uh, explained it pretty clear. Okay, Councilman. And, and, and for the record, we're talking about that amendment specific to Section 309 of the Charter under Paragraph A6. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have the motion and second. We have council discussion right now. Councilman Bellard, you have the floor. How would the director of uh, LUS or utilities, it's going to affect the unincorporated council? Wait, I'm sorry, what? Hey, explain to me again, the, Mr. Terrio's. Uh, well, what Mr. Bellard is trying to say is that applies great to a city council should it pass, but in the unincorporated or the parish, we don't have LUS and we don't have five. So we wouldn't need that appointee. It wouldn't be seven on the parish. Well, and, and I think another thing is, is, is <coughs> we don't 
all we're doing is giving uh, the mayor president a recommendation. He can take the recommendation <coughs> and throw it in the garbage. It's it's not when the way we vote in the professional service. Uh, like I said, I haven't been there in a long time either. But he doesn't have to go where we vote with. And uh, can you get uh, Mayor Robodeau's mic height? Hot. Is that correct? You're you also. ultimately <coughs> will decide. We just give you a recommendation. And if it would come back in today's world, three, two, one way, and you wanted to go the other, you're going to go that way. Or I shouldn't answer for you, but you can go that way. Isn't that correct? You have the power. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're having this discussion. Um, the answer is that, yes, it is a recommendation that comes from, from the professional services to me. Ultimately, the, I then select, um, which is important because under all the scenarios that we're discussing, um, there would be parish council members voting on LUS contracts and making recommendations, which defeats the whole concept of what we're talking about tonight. So I could effectively ignore those parish council votes as it relates to professional services if I so chose or whoever's the mayor president could so this particular instance is really complicated if you try to fix it to where there's a parish professional service and a city professional service um, would probably be the appropriate way to go about it but since it is only a recommendation to the mayor president's office and the mayor president ultimately makes that decision I think we've probably spent enough time on it uh, as is. And, and if it was the, the original way, you have that at one appointment, you can appoint the public work director if you want to be at that meeting, or if it's an LUS, you could appoint the LUS director to, to be there. If, and we're not going backwards, but if under that, I had my, my button hit, uh, but yeah. that, you could have done that already. Under the amended, uh, under the charter amendment as it's passed so far, yes, I, my appointment can be uh, whoever I want it to be, I can I can show up if I wanted right. to. So right. that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Rodo, any other comment? That was it. Thank you. Okay. Back to Mr. Terrio. Yep, Mr. Robodeau, let's put him back on. Same thing that what you just said. So even if we left it the way it would be, you could ignore uh, the parish guy anyway if it's just one person. Yes. And ignore their vote. So whether it's one or two or three. Whoever the parish individual is, if it's applying to a, a city uh, uh, issue, you could just ignore them if, if need be. I, I'm, I have the ability to ignore the entire professional service recommendation at the risk of what other punishment may come on some other issues that I present before the council. But yes, ultimately, the mayor president's office makes that choice and, yep. and factors in the recommendation is all. Okay, and in addition to that, not always at professional services does everybody vote in agreement with what it is. So that is true. It's not always a unanimous vote. All right, guys, I'll uh, pull back on this one and uh, I'll withdraw on the professional services. We have a withdrawal by Mr. Terrio and Ms. Liz. Do you want to withdraw that? We withdraw on back to square one. Yeah, you got the floor again. Mr. Terry, you have the floor, sir. <laughs> okay, let's see here. The next one, section 2-08. Mr. Escott, that is investigations. Yes, sir. You and I also spoke about this. Because what it basically stated, and I want the public to be aware of this, is that, to sum it up in a nutshell, the city council, this two, talking about two separate councils, the city council and a parish council. The city council has the ability to investigate the parish council, and the parish council has the ability to investigate the city council under the proposed charter. Mr. Escott, if you would like to um, uh, explain the verbiage of what this would do. Sure. Um, regarding your amendment you want to offer? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, this is uh, specific to Section 2-08, um, <coughs> K-1, 
captioned investigations. The proposed amendment uh, would affect primarily the first half of that paragraph, uh, where in a, the first line it says the city council and or the parish council. Uh, the or would be removed uh, and following that as the line goes on acting independently or jointly we would take out independently or uh, make investigations into the affairs of and remove city of Lafayette and the parish of Lafayette and or uh, reading it more fully then essentially what happens is the city council and the parish council acting jointly are the two bodies that would investigate the affairs of the city parish government. Further in the provision, there is an inserted phrase, sentence, that spe specifies that only the city council acting independently may make invest investigations into the affairs of the city of Lafayette and related conduct of the city of Lafayette officials, officers, employees, etc and that only the parish council acting independently uh, may make investigations into the affairs of the parish of Lafayette and the related conduct of parish of Lafayette officials, officers, employees, etc. That is the extent of the amendment. Okay. I'd like to make that amendment. Motion by Councilman Terrio. Second. Second by Councilman Bellard. Councilman Castillo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we're staying consolidated in our services, which means employees, departments, um, any officer, I guess, within the department, within city parish government. So I don't understand why we are saying a city council has to act on city Affairs. I, I'm, I'm kind of confused because it's a consolidated service. Our employees are, are paid by both parish and city. So why couldn't we jointly investigate the employees, the department, the office, the agency? Right here, you, you, you're taking one or the other out of it, out of the investigation. Okay, you might cut. Okay, you're asking me that, Mr. Castillo? Oh. Your, your amendment. Okay. You want me, you want me to clarify? Yes, I, if you don't I, mind, Mr. Not, Escott, that's where I was going with yeah, you. Mr. Castillo, uh, I think the amendment, what it does is it, it effectively says for any affairs of the city parish government and or its employees, officials, et cetera, that investigation is to be made jointly by both councils because it's a shared thing, right? Uh, and that is still in this amendment. That it, it, it simply eliminates the ability of one council independently to investigate the affairs of the city parish government. You have to do it jointly. And then it specifies that as to the city, it's the city council that makes the investigation. As to the parish, it's the parish council. But there is still an avenue of investigation of the city parish government. It just has to be done jointly. Did, did I clarify that? <laughs> not, not as clear as I'd like it to be. Um, it does remove, the only thing it removes related to the city parish government affairs investigations is the ability of one council on its own to investigate the city parish government affairs. Okay, I'm good with that. If that's, that's what it does. I'm, I'm that's fine. what it is. I'm good, thank you. Okay, we got clarification. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm not seeing any council discussion uh, anymore at this point. Do we have any public comment in regards to Mr. Terrio's amendment? Would anybody out there with all of those wonderful names would like to come up and speak? Do we? Okay. I just I just have a simple question. Who pays for the investigation? Mr. Terry, who pays for the investigation? If it's the city, it's the city. If it's the parish, it's the parish. Clarifies it. Does that clarify, Mr. Escott? 
Yeah. No, I want to hear it from you. Go ahead. Your but mic's on. The, the charter doesn't get into the cost of investigations, I don't believe. Um, but logically, oh, if sorry. it's a city investigation by the city council, it would be a cost to the city and vice versa the parish. If it's a joint investigation by both councils, we split uh, the pot. Then it's a split cost. Okay. All right. Any other speakers? Any other speakers on the investigation amendment? All right, not seeing any at this time. Go ahead and call the vote. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District six? Yes. District seven? Yes. Dist District eight? Yes. District nine? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. Motion to amend approved. Okay. Mr. Terrio. One more quick one here for now and then one maybe later. But under Section 814, this one's real easy, Mr. Escott. It says basically the charter shall become effective only if approved by a majority of those voting on the charter residing in Lafayette Parish and approved by a majority of those voting on the charter residing in the city of Lafayette. Back in 1992, whenever the verbiage uh, to uh, be uh, approved by the electors after residing in Lafayette Parish, there was uh, a quote that said, outside the city of Lafayette. That is uh, five words I want to add to that section, which basically will be saying that by a majority of those voting on the charter residing in Lafayette Parish, outside the city of Lafayette, and approved by a majority of those voting on the charter residing in the city of Lafayette. You see what I'm talking about? And again, that was on the 1992 ballot. That's how the verbiage was back then. For some reason, it's not showing up here in 814. See right here? Should say. Kevin. Can you put uh, Mr. Escott on, please? Oh, I left him. He, he's been hot all night. Oh, I'm going to give you a rest. Okay, go ahead. Um, Mr. Mr. Abair needs to clarify something. We were discussing about the, the need for this amendment on this provision. As I mentioned, and I'll, I'll give him a lead in as to what he's going to say. Um, this is a, the original transitional prov provision that we did not touch because it's not relevant to what we are doing tonight in terms of the proposed charter amendments. But I'll let Mr. Abair expound on the reason why it's probably not proper to go ahead and make that amendment. I think what, what Mr. Escott said is certainly true, and I'll just add to that. There are a number of things in the current charter that are obsolete or uh, have already been executed or, or fulfilled, this, this 814 being one of them. Give you another example in the in the list of departments in section four of the charter there still is a reference to the administrative services department which is a department that hasn't existed for probably 10 12 years or so but consistent with our charge that we were given we did not take it upon ourselves to make any changes to the charter that were not in our view necessitated by the purposes for which the authors you know asked us to to do that so 814 is one of those things uh, you'll see also there's a lot of footnotes in the charter that either already things that already happened or obsolete so for all those reasons 814 uh, would not be we wouldn't touch that and and I would add to change the method by which um, this charter would be voted upon uh, wouldn't be able to be done for this vote that the current a manner in which this vote, if, uh, if it goes forward to amend the charter, would be conducted. I think it's in 706, which is the provision that you asked Mr. Escott about earlier with regard to the petitions, um, that the, the current formula 703. to 703, sorry, uh, 703. 703C provides now that um, a vote 
to amend the charter would be uh, all of the electorate of the parish of Lafayette. And that could not be changed for this amendment. It could be changed in the future for future amendments, which is exactly what is proposed um, in this charter. So for, for this vote, uh, should this pass, we're stuck with the formula in 703, and, and we can't change that to be effective in this election. Okay, so I understand what you're saying. Currently, based on what you just said, we have a charter that's been substituted and provided to this council here tonight. A new revised one, the new red line, correct? Yes. That you're saying that there are still a lot of things in that charter that have not been corrected, which you just said. A lot well, of things I, that have not been corrected, this being one, section eight or whatever you talked about. Uh, there are a lot of things, the services no longer uh, viable that are still in there, but y'all did not correct that. Isn't that what I just heard, Mr. Escott? Let, let me, yeah, I can, I can tell you exactly what our objective was in the resulting proposed charter amendments. We were charged with the duty to prepare any and all necessary edits to the proposed to the charter to accomplish the division of the current city parish council into two separate councils a Lafayette City Council and a Lafayette Parish Council and not to edit change modify etc any other portions of the charter that were not necessary to accomplish that split there are a number of places in the charter that if the if the project were Mr. Escott take the charter and clean it up, clear it up, take out what's not relevant anymore, take out what's obsolete. That's a whole different project. It'd have to be completely rewritten. Almost. Yeah. But the amendments that we have here are specifically related to what is necessary to be able to uh, successfully split the legislative branch into two separate councils. Okay. So in your opinion, uh, we don't have to add 